in value so decentralizing uh, as much of it as possible which they can handle at the local level is in my view a good thing so the, the tendency should be to sort of parcel out things that can be managed at the district level and at the state level of course there are some things that you know districts district magistrates can't decide about airlines and about uh, you know about railways and stuff so i feel that the big decisions um, should be national and then even on the lockdown front leeway should be given to the states that is if you want to lock down you want to understand the nature of your lockdown you please do your lockdown so you give option value to the state and the state can say okay actually i'll do this and i won't do that and and the risk sort of comes on the state and and then they manage it better that would be that would be how i would think about it but i think the current government has a slightly different view they they prefer to sort of uh, manage and see the thing and centralize the thing i mean there there are two perspectives i don't i don't necessarily think one is wrong and one is right i i i veer towards the decentralization i think that's what i would have done is announced a bunch of money available for proposing good schemes for reaching the poorest people and and let states innovate i mean this this is this is really uh, and i think there are good ngos in most states who can be brought into that process and who and as you say the district magistrates often have great ideas and we might as well benefit from all of that so I, are there uh, some experiences in other countries that uh, you found interesting so what well, i'll tell you one thing that indonesia is doing right now indonesia has decided that it's going to give out you know cash transfers and it's going to give give it through entirely through a community decision making process so the community is going to decide who are the people who are needy and and choose them for the for the transfers and uh, i mean there's we worked on actually we on worked with the indonesian government on exactly this issue many years ago and we find that it doesn't you know it doesn't do any worse than the centralized targeting is you don't you don't get captured by special interests or anything and in fact what you get, get is you know people make judgments about what is appropriate uh in a much more locally nuanced way uh, in, in india so I, i think that that's an ex- experience we could learn from they have very much gone in the direction of using you know telling the community here's some money give it to the ones who are the most needy and that's probably uh, and in an emergency that's a good policy for sure i think is at least the community has some information that wouldn't possibly centralize if you would run into the sort of dominant caste problem where where the dominant caste would try and sort of uh, shape that uh, that money flow maybe but on the other hand you would worry that if you tr- in the process of trying to prevent that i would rather put in place extra money to allow for that than to try to figure out who are the deserving people in the village it just seems to me i mean i think the mm, one that drives a bit in the direction of what i think you've been saying and the government has also been saying which is let's make try to widen the reach of pds uh, and that's clearly right and make that basically quasi universal so that's a one way to avoid that but if you want to do more than that to get cash to people and you know some people have these jandan accounts and others don't some people are in nrdj roles who as another way to get cash to people and some are not some are on the ujwala lists and there are some are not once you got through those lists you still find that there is a bunch of people many 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 millions who are excluded and how do you serve those people and for that it's clear that there should be some funds available to some very local authority who can identify those people and serve them and i i don't disagree with you that there might be elite capture of some form or the other we worried about that a lot in indonesia when we were working there in fact found not much evidence for it to be honest i think we'll have to sort of take a chance that some of this will go wrong but i think we, if we don't take a chance we'll surely get it wrong so so be be brave basically yeah and take few be risks because we are in a bad situation when you, yeah when you are in a, in, in dire straits then i think uh, being brave is the only option really 
And and how do you see this thing playing out? You know, once the disease washes out six months from now, from the poverty aspect. I mean, there's obviously well, going to be a backlash, economic backlash. There's going to be bankruptcies. How do we sort of think of it in the medium medium term as opposed to the immediate short term? Right. So that's sort of what we were talking about a little bit before, which is uh, you know this question of uh, I think a demand shortfall. I think that's that's the. I mean, there are two concerns. One is how to avoid a chain of bankruptcies. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe writing off a lot of debt is the way to avoid that, as you had mentioned. And the other, other one is, is a, de a demand shortfall and getting some cash into the hands of the population is the way, the best way to kickstart the economy. And the US is very aggressively doing that. And this is a Republican administration run by a bunch of financiers. In fact, and they are willing to do it where we should be willing. I mean, this is not this is not run by like a bunch of uh, socially so, socially minded liberals. It's run by you know people who used to work in the financial sector, but they have decided that just for economic survival of the economy, uh, we we need to pump money into people's hands. And I think we we should take a cue from that. Hmm. This is. This is also changing the sort of balance of power in the world to an extent. Uh, that 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 is also uh, pretty clear. Yeah. How 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 do you think about that? I think I think the, both of the right. I'm very worried for um, countries like France and Italy, which which didn't, which especially Italy, I think had a fairly disastrous uh, outcome, and partly that's a result of the state being not, but I mean, the Italian state has run, been run by, you know, really, I you know, not very, uh, let's say, distinguished people for a while. And uh, it, as a result, it's, it's, it's sort of the health system was in, on the last legs when this hit. The US moving much more in a nationalist direction is extremely frightening for the world, for the the rise of China being a threat, but uh, and um, if the U.S. starts reacting to it, it could be an extremely destabilizing threat. So I think that that's a that's something to worry about a lot. The undercurrent is that strong leaders can take on this virus. What is being sold is that it requires one man to charge into you know against the virus. That's that's really the problem. That has been disastrous, as we know. I mean, the U.S. and Brazil are two countries which are just messing up right and left. And these are two quote unquote strong men behaving like uh, they, they're pretending that they understand anything, but you know, it's even what they say every day is kind of laughable. So we have this, uh, I mean, we have, if anybody wanted to believe in the strong man theory, this is, this is the time to disabuse them thus, themselves. Thank you very much. And uh, yes, thank you, that was a pleasure. Please, when you're in India, uh, let's have a, a cup of tea or something. Yes, that would be lovely. Yeah. And regards to everyone at home. Yes, uh, likewise. Uh, and take care of yourself.